The light of God is in this place. Good morning. Welcome this morning to Ridgely Christian Church on the second Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of peace. Wherever you are, we hope and pray you know that God is with you. Make your space sacred. Light a candle. Get some elements for communion. Share the YouTube or Facebook video with your friends so they can come to worship with you. And then settle in to rest and be soaked and cared for by God's amazing peace. We are so glad you are here today. This week we have several ways that you can grow in your faith and be a part of the life of our church. We have three Bible studies available this week for you to join in on. Tonight at 7.30, our Bible in a Year group will meet on Zoom. We are halfway through the Bible and in Isaiah right now. You are welcome to join us any time in that. On Tuesday at 11, our disciples class will meet. They are studying the book, the Gospel of Matthew. And on Wednesday mornings, our open door class will meet on Zoom. They are learning and thinking about call stories, ways people have been called by God in the New Testament and how God might be calling us. You are invited and encouraged to participate in any of those as you want, and we'll have links for all of those available. As we are worshiping and experiencing Advent at home this year, we want to help bring the church to your house. There are several ways to do that. You can order a poinsettia in memory or honor of someone you love, and we will bring it directly to your house or to someone you want us to take it to. All the proceeds from that will support our Good Samaritan Fund to help our neighbors when they're in crisis. If you would like an Advent devotional, adult devotional, or family with kids devotional, let us know if you haven't gotten one yet and we can get one of those to you. We also have Christmas ornaments. They're beautiful with the church logo on them, so you can bring the church to your tree at home. If you want to order one of those, we'll have the link for you and we'll bring that to you as well. Save the date for December 22nd. It's a Tuesday. We will have a virtual Christmas concert at 6 p.m. that you do not want to miss. It will feature Jay Armstrong Johnson, who grew up in this church and is now a Broadway star. It will also feature Danny Zelliber, a phenomenal New York pianist who once was our organist, and amazing local musicians, Amanda, Ro Amanda Williams and Allison Robinson, as well as it will be produced by our own David Lanza. So you don't want to miss that. On December 20th, that Sunday during worship, we will have a virtual Christmas pageant. It will have all of the chaos and joy that I imagined the first Christmas might have had. Today is the last day to get the kids in your life signed up for that. So send an email to the church if they're not signed up yet and want to be. This Advent, we also want to continue to be God's love in action in our community. There are several ways you can do that right now. You can participate in our reverse Advent box. Take a box in your house every day. Put some non-perishable food items in it or toiletry items. And on Christmas Eve, we will share those with our neighbors at West Aid Pantry with a purpose. You can also get a mask. We're selling face masks. We have ones that will support our Connect ministry and say love one another. And ones that will support Ridgely's outreach in the community that say do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly and have the disciples chalice. Wearing a mask is a great way to love and care for our neighbors in this time. Finally, remember that next Sunday we will have a board meeting directly after church and we would love for you to be there. Friends, today is Peace Sunday. Hear these words from the poet Maya Angelou. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first it's too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. 
that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. O come, O come, Emmanuel, come, you who brings a peace that passes all understanding. We desperately need you now. Our world needs you now. Come into our overwhelmed spirits, Come into our worry-wracked minds. Come into our hearts. Come into our lives again. O oh, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, we come today to meet you. Meet us here today. When life seems overwhelming, God's peace grounds us. When we feel lost and the bottom falls out, God's peace that passes all understanding catches us and guides us. Peace is quiet and calm. Peace invites us to rest and to find refuge. The prophets reminded us that peace and justice are connected. When all people are treated as God's beloved children, the world will know peace. We must be the bearers of God's peace to the world around us. What would it look like if God's peace filled our world today? What would it look like if God's peace filled your life today? Peace is coming. God's peace is about to be born in our, into our world. Jesus is the peace. upon us, we know that you, O oh Lord, are near. Praise be to our God, who brings us a peace 
which surpasses all understanding. Divine Creator, let our hearts and spirits be filled with your everlasting peace. Let us be filled and be glad in it. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Good morning. So this Sunday, we're lighting the second candle of Advent, and the second candle represents peace. And so I wanted to teach you guys today the ASL, the sign language that you can use to represent peace. And so it has two different parts. And the first part means to become. And so to become, you're gonna put your, hand, your hands flat. One's gonna be closer to you and the other one's gonna be in front just like this. And then you're going to twist them so that the other hand is in front and the, other, and the one that was in front is closer to you now. And that means to become. And then the second part is calm or quiet. And so to do that, you're going to push both of your hands down and away from you. So let's put them together. So you're going to say to become and then calm and quiet. And then that's the sign for peace. And then you can also learn during this time, we also hear a lot of peace be with you. And so we already know what peace, how to sign peace. So you say peace. And then with, you're going to have both of your fists and they're going to come together just like this. And then with you, you, if you have multiple people, you can go like this. And then if it's one person, you can point to them. So let's put it all together and say, peace be with you. So you're going to sign to become calm or quiet. And then with. You. Isn't that wonderful? So when you start to sign peace, it kind of looks like you're feeling a little bit worried and like you're, you have your hands together a little bit unsettled. But when God says, don't be anxious about anything, he doesn't want us to be worried about anything like our families or school or in the world. And God tells us to pray with him and let him know what's bothering us. Then he can give us peace. So we're going to put our hands together, but then we have to remember that God gives us peace. And then the final sign is kind of like God soothing out and taking away all of our worries, and we don't have to be able to understand it, but we can know that he's going to protect us from being afraid or being worried, and he will calm down, calm us down. So the next time that you're worried or afraid, you can remember to pray and ask, for, ask God to help you, and know that God will calm you down and give you a beautiful feeling of peace. So let's pray together and remember all the peace that God brings us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us peace when we are afraid and helping us find peace all the time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we come to the time in our service where we go to God in prayer as one community, we have a couple of prayer concerns that we lift up together. First, um, Sue Pointer will be having a procedure on her shoulder this week. We lift up Sue as for healing and for comfort during this time. 
And we also lift up Pam DeVoe, who will be having knee replacement surgery this week. Also, prayers of comfort and healing and prayers of wisdom for the doctors for both of them. Now, let us lift up all of those things which are on our own hearts and minds and go to God in prayer together. Let us pray. God, we come to you today in this season of Advent, reminded that times of waiting are good for reflection of what has been and what could be. But this year, in and of itself, has been a season of waiting, a season of anticipation for the normal, so it could be easy for us to get swept up and miss the lessons which Advent holds. It is through Advent that we learn about how waiting, how the seasons of anticipation are not just about waiting, but about learning to hope for what is to come, about finding and being peace, with each other, through each other, about loving on each other, and about finding joy anyway. This year, many of us will walk through this season with heavy hearts, with grief, with aching, longing for Christmases that have been, that could have been, wishing this year away to the next. O oh, steadfast creator, help us to stay present, to hold fast to each other and give a little extra attention this year to making sure we are present for each other. Remind us of those gifts which you have already given us so that we may be gifts of presence to each other this holiday season. Help us to be that light of peace to each other every single day. Be with us in the joy, but also as we face the daily struggles which we each hold in our hearts. So all of this and everything else. Amen. This week, as I think about giving, I've just been thinking about all of the ways that I keep seeing all of you give to each other, whether it is baking cookies or donating items to send to Reverend Boyd, or those of you who help decorate the church, those who have picked up Advent boxes and poinsettias and ornaments and delivered them to each other. There are so many ways that y'all are constantly giving and being a community. It is so wonderful to see. And when we do these things, when we're giving, whether it's monetarily or through acts of service or any way, we are being the people that are bringing peace and hope and joy and love to each other. We are embodying all of the things that Advent is teaching us about. We are preparing our community for Christ. So as we consider what it means to give today, whether it is time for you to make your offering or whether you have another way to give, Consider how that gift is a part of this Advent season. If you are going to make a monetary donation, you can use the link that's on the screen or in your chat right now, or you can send a check directly to the church. I look forward to seeing all of the ways that everyone gives. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. For you today in gratitude for your constant presence in our lives. When we are hurting and cry out, you are there. When we are anxious and afraid and seek direction, you are there. When our hearts are bursting with joy, we give thanks and know that you are there. Please help us to always seek you and stay close to you. Please let us be your hands and feet on earth and help others to feel your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It can mean freedom from oppressive thought or emotion. It can also mean harmony in personal relations or a state of mutual concord between governments. Or maybe we're talking about peace as in a fragment, a piece of something. Both peace as in tranquil, and peace as in a fragment, you can find both of these words and symbols here at this table. Each and every week, you are invited to bring your, your whole selves to this table, but maybe, maybe you can just bring a little peace. And you know what? That's enough. That little piece that comes to this table that you are brave enough to present, to bring, that little piece is here and welcomed and fully recognized. And that little piece that is at this table, I pray that it gets filled with a big piece that comfort that tranquil filling that comes with the love of God. And we know about this love through Jesus. Jesus is the one who taught us that when we sit at this table, whether we are fully ourselves here or whether we can just bring a piece, he, he told us about the bread of life, 
that we would each get a piece of. And he also told us of the cup of love that each of us also get a piece of. And when we partake of these elements, this bread of life and this cup of love, Jesus told us to remember him. Today, as you take a piece of the bread and a piece of, from the cup, may you be filled with the knowledge of God's love that we learned about from the Prince of Peace. And we remember this on the night that Jesus took the bread and blessed it. And he said, this is for you, each and every one of you. Take and eat. Get your peace. And then at the end of the meal, he did the same with the cup, blessing it, saying, this is a love for you. Take, be filled with it. May it bring you peace. He said, every time you take of the bread and drink of the cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. I said it before that the prophets talk all about how God is working in the world, especially during times of destruction and chaos and despair. Then they invite the people to be part of God's work. They also often name the evils of the world and the consequences uh, involved if the people choose not to engage in God's work in the world. And the book of Micah is no different. In the world of that Micah lived in, destruction was present all around. Uh, one thinker, Anne Stewart, put it really beautifully. She said that Micah's oracle speaks to a world that is caught in the bewilderment of violence, uncertainty, and economic disruption. Well, there is much that separates us from 8th century Judah, these dynamics are not unlike the world in which we live. We too know terror and fragility on national, international, and personal planes. We too seek hope that the world will be different. We too yearn for security and peace. The promise that Micah is the promise of Micah is that God will be faithful and will appear in surprising ways. She continues on to say that Micah invites us to look for God's presence where it is least expected and to be attuned to the voices of the small, the powerless, and the vulnerable. She asks us, are we prepared to be surprised? Are we prepared to welcome the Holy One into our midst? I love those questions. Are we prepared to be surprised? Are we prepared to welcome the Holy One in our midst? In a world full of destruction, Are we prepared for peace to happen? Do we know what peace actually looks like? Are we even looking for it? Are we even able to look for it? I wonder, what does peace look like in the midst of so much destruction? There is a a beautiful Japanese art form of putting broken pottery back together. Uh, the, The way that they often adhere these broken pieces back together involves Uh, using something beautiful like gold or silver. And in putting these different pieces together that had experienced destruction, by embracing the flaws and the imperfections. This, they put, they put the, this broken vase, this broken pottery back together and it creates something new and beautiful. And oftentimes it's even stronger than before. What was once destroyed is now a new vase, full and beautiful, and ready to be filled. I think there's something really beautiful in that 
art form. Taking something that has broken into so many pieces and putting it back together in a unique and unexpected way. And it creates something that brings beauty into the world, something that invokes peace inside when you see it. Do I think that destruction has to happen just for us to experience peace? Absolutely not. I want to be very clear about that. I do not think destruction has to happen for us to know peace. But I think destruction in its many forms is just part of chaos that will inevitably happen. And it looks so many different ways, whether we're talking on personal levels or global levels. Destruction is part of the chaos of life. But that's not all of the story, and that is surely not where the story ends. See, what happens is, is God... God is present in and around and working in the midst of this of, of all destruction that may happen and trying to create something new, trying to bring something beautiful into the world in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the destruction. Trying to put these broken pieces back together in a way, creating something new, something beautiful, something unknown and unexpected, something that can be a vessel for peace. And does this with our lives, does this in the world. What is now, what was once many pieces God brings together to create one piece. What an unexpected gift. During Advent, we often look to the prophets who point us to the coming birth of the Christ child, the anointed one, and teaching us about this unexpected gift, this unexpected Messiah who is about to come into the world. And Micah tells us that this person will be the one of peace. Jesus would take the many pieces of our lives and bring them together to create peace in our heart. He would bring broken people, people who have been fractured into something new, creating a community of individuals, making one new, unexpected, beautiful community, a community that brings peace, a community that cares, that nurtures, that feeds, that heals. This is what the one of peace did and continues to do. Beloveds, if you feel like you are surrounded by destruction, maybe it's global, maybe it's national, maybe it's personal, I pray that this Advent season you know that God is working in unexpected ways, sifting through the destruction, carefully picking up the pieces and delicately putting them to create something new, something beautiful, something unexpected, creating a new vase that can be filled with peace. Amen. And if you want to know more about the one of peace, about Jesus, about God, about the spirit, about church, we want to hear from you. We want to get to know you. 
we want we would love 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 to tell you more about what it means to be part of Ridgely, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So feel free to reach out to us on whatever whatever platform you are worshiping with us on, or you can send us an email uh, to office at ridgelychristian.org. town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars, Beloveds, during this Advent season, as we are seeking peace, be filled with the knowledge that God is working and that the one of peace is truly present in your lives and in our world. Amen.